Let's say amen. amen. Pastor Kyle's been after me for months to do this. We weren't able to because we weren't able to find the track in my key. Thank God for technology because we found one. I hope you're blessed by this. Certain danger on in the crossfire of hope and regret. Thought I could be my own savior, but I'm sinking, sinking fast. Cause there's too much to handle alone in the battle. I'm So close to surrender from my enemies. The Lord came from heaven to fight for me. When I am defenseless, you climb in the trenches, the trenches with me. Faithful from the beginning You felt my pain Yes, you've been where I've been And I heard you say It is finished And it's written that we win in the end The heart under fire Facing defeat So close to my enemies but the Lord came from heaven to fight for me when I am defenseless he climbs in the trenches the Lord of glory made himself low to be my defender wherever I go my shield and my protector and friend always there with me Lord always there with me when my heart's under fire face in defeat so close to surrender from my enemies you came from heaven to fight for me when I'm you climb in the trenches when I'm defenseless. I'm in the trenches with me. This morning, hallelujah. Oh, come on. He is right there with us. Whatever we're facing, whatever we go through, whatever we experience, God's right there in those trenches with us. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord this morning. Can we stand this morning? Let the worship team minister just real quick. Let's, let's welcome the presence of God again here this this morning. Presence is all. Yeah. 
your phones, your Bible app, whatever you have. I want you, uh, if you would, open up to Joshua chapter 1 this morning. Uh, as you turn there, I'll just say a uh, big thank you, as always, to our pastor uh, for allowing me the opportunity to be able to speak and to share our ministers, uh, my wife and my daughter, for constant encouragement. It's a, it's a tremendous privilege and tremendous honor to be able to speak on a Sunday and especially on a United We Can Day Sunday. So, uh, so excited to, to do this. Everybody have a Joshua chapter one. All right, let's read verse number nine. I have the amplified version. I like the way this says here. It says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, be courageous in your new territory. You guys can be seated this morning. So I've titled the message, Be Courageous in Your New Territory. You know, United We Can Day and the, the expansion that we see around the world with United We Can, the opening of our... Uh, convention Center in Guadalajara, um, you know, everything that is going on. The, the theme that we have for this year locally is taking new territory and expanding new territory. So I, I felt it appropriate to talk about uh, our new territory that we have uh, or, or here today. And, you know, God has called each and every one of us, each and every one of you out there, we, God has a new territory, a promise, a plan for you here in 2023 question is, do you see it? Do you recognize what God had, the territory that God has for you? Have you seen or understand or know the promises that he's given you for this year? I know that he's given us promises and callings for our lives, but have you seen what God is your, for your territory for this year? Have you seen what he's put before you for 2023? Can you see it? Do you know what it is? Some of us may have already stepped into our new territory. You know, maybe it's a new relationship, a job. A, um, maybe it's physically new territory. You know, we were, uh, my wife and I were so blessed yesterday to be able to move into our new house. Yes. Been a long, hard, hard work for we closed in January, and we 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 moved in. There, spent the very first night yesterday uh, there. It's been a, a long, long, long process, and you know, so many people to thank with you know uh, Ray and Celeste did, did so much to to help in just coordinating work and, and helping get people there. Anthony and Savannah came and helped uh, a lot. Pastor Dave in the men's home, Tyrone helping set tile. Uh, even got Pastor out there to paint. Pastor Danny came and painted my door jams. He's like, I could do a door jam in six minutes. Well, Pastor, you showed up at my house at, at two and you didn't leave till five. I don't got that many doors. I don't know. But, you know, whatever your new territory is, we're stepping into new territory. We, we have that. Maybe you've stepped into it. Maybe you've seen it. Maybe it's, like I said, that new relationship, that new, uh, you know, something financial. Whatever it is, we have new territory. Some of us are already there. 
Some of us are waiting to step into our new territory. We're just we're sitting and we're, we're, we're building our faith. We have our faith and we're, we're resting in God and we're trusting in him. And we, we see the promise before us and we're doing everything we need to do. And we're waiting to take that new territory. Some of us are afraid to begin the journey, though. Maybe we're afraid that we're not going to succeed. Maybe we're afraid of what people might think about us. Maybe we think that we're not enough, we don't deserve it, whatever. Some of us may be afraid to, t to take our new territory, to step into that new territory. It, we may even have some people here that are still trying to read the map. You know, you, you just got saved. You're trying to figure out your salvation. You don't know, you, you're not, you, you can't recognize God's plans and purposes for your lives. You're, you're just waking up every morning. You're going you're gonna to pray. You're going to read the word like you're taught. And you, you're just kind of beginning that journey. You're just starting to read the map. But whatever it is, we all have a, a journey that we're going on. We all have a territory that God has called us to in 2023. We all have something in our lives that we're able to grab a hold of this year, and I want to ask the question again, can you see it? Can you see the territory? See, whether you've, whether you've obtained it, whether you're looking for it, whether you're afraid to walk into it or not, I have this for you. It says, quote, that says, success is not final. Failure is not fatal, but is the courage to continue that counts. Let me say that it is the courage that can to continue that counts. And we see here in Joshua chapter one, it says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid or dismayed for your God is with you. <clears throat> there are a few things that we need to know for us to be courageous in our new territory. And the first one thing I want to mention to be courageous in our new territory, we first need to be strong, just as it says here. See, whatever you're doing, whatever you're walking into, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going to step into this year, how many of you know there's going to be some challenges? We're going to have to fight a little bit to take that new territory. We're going to have to uh, put in a little bit of work, a little bit of uh, a sweat, a little bit of perseverance, maybe a little bit of tears. Come on, moving into this house, it was not easy for us. Like I said, we closed on January 30th. We barely spent our last night yesterday. That's like three months of remodeling and working and fighting with contractors. Not Ray, but fighting with contractors and, and, and plumbers. And, and uh, my wife probably had uh, uh, three mental breakdowns with this. You know, just, and, and, and I wanted to give up, I don't know how many times. You know, it's a hard fought process, but we need to be strong taking our new territory. Moving into our new territory, we need to stand in the strength that God has given us. We're going to feel like we can't do it sometimes. We're going to feel like we're going to fail. You know, many times we looked at the process and just said, what are we doing? This is too hard. We, we shouldn't have adventured into this, but how many know when God's got the calling for you, when God's got the promise for you, the, the, if you persevere, if you fight, if you have strength, Amen. The Lord will see you through. Psalms 27, uh, 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. I will trust in him with all of my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy and I burst out in thanksgiving. See, to take our new territory, we have to stand within the strength that God has given us. We have to know that if God be for us, who could be against us? We have to know that we could do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We need to know that whatever the devil puts in our way, that our God is going to be bigger than that. We we need to tell the devil that I don't care what you do. I don't care what you try and put in my way. I have the power, the strength, and the anointing of God upon my life, and I'm going to stand in that. I'm going to have my faith and my trust and my hope in him, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. See, the gates of hell will not prevail when we stand in God, when we trust in God, when we have our strength in him. But how many know we have to build up our strength? It's something that just doesn't come naturally. It's something that we have to work at. So every day we have to remind ourselves to be strong. Every day we have to remind ourselves to stand in the strength that God has given us. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Another thing that we need to do, just as it says, is we need to be courageous. See, courage is different than strength. What does it mean to be cur courageous? According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, courage is a mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and to withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. 
Amen. So not only do we have to be strong, but we have to withstand. We have to persevere. It says we also have to venture. We have to, we have to be able to go out. We not only have to recognize the territory that God has for us, we not only have to recognize what the promises that he has for us, but we actually have to step out into it. We have to step towards our family being saved. We have to step towards that promotion at your work. We have to step towards those things that God has for our lives. We can't just sit back and wait for it to be handed to us. At the same time, we also have to be bold about it. We have to have that strength that God has given us. See, you know, like I said, it's not just going to come to us. And, you know, the devil, he just wants us to be complacent. Right? Can I be honest? He doesn't necessarily want us to, uh, you know, his goal is not necessarily to get us to backslide and go back to drugs and our addiction and whatever it was before we knew Christ. He just wants us to be complacent. He just wants us to not move forward for God. He's totally fine with us coming and sitting here on a Sunday morning, if you even come on a Sunday, or a Wednesday, if you come on a Wednesday, and doing nothing. He's totally happy with that. He just wants us to stop forward progress. See, the devil wants to slow us down. He wants to stop us from moving forward in God, and we need to venture out. We need to be courageous to reach our new territory. Let me give you an example of this. The devil wants us, I thought about, I, I, I saw this uh, on, on, uh, on reels and I thought I'd mention it. The devil wants us to give up something we already got. See, that's what, that's what he's, he's happy with. He wants us to slow down, he wants us to stop, but he just, he wants us to give up something we already got. You have your new territory. You have the promise of God in your life. Maybe you haven't stepped into that territory, but we have the promise of it in our life. And all the devil wants is he wants us to give up on that. He wants us to give up on the territory, the promise, the calling that God has for our lives. Here's an example. Genesis chapter 1. It says, God created man in his image. In Genesis chapter 3. The snake tells Eve, eat of the fruit and you will be like God. But we already have it. We are created in his image. All he wants to do is for us to give up something that we already have. How many want to hold on to what God has for you? How many want to keep what God has for us? We have to be strong. We also have to be courageous. We have to stand in the strength. We have to stand in the, the power that God has. We... Uh, Look at this in Ephesians chapter 6. I got the message version. It says it like this. I really love the way that it says it. When we talk about standing, being courageous, holding on to promises that God has given us, holding on to what he has for our lives. It says, you're up against more than you can handle on your own. This is Ephesians 6 beginning in 13 through 18. You are up against more than you can handle on your own. Take all of the help that you can get. Every weapon that God has issued you. And when it's all over, you'll be shouting and still standing on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them to your life, and you'll need them throughout your entire life. God's word is indispensable weapon. In the same way, a prayer is essential to the ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up that no one falls behind or drops out. I mean, it's talking about the armor of God, but it says that it's more than just mere words. That when it's all done, when we have courage, when we have the strength of God, when we have that, we can stand and fight the battle. We could go to the enemy and tell him, you can't have my family because I got a promise of God. You can't have my finances because God has given me a promise. You can't have this territory because God has already given it to me. We can stand, we can fight, and when it's all over, we are still standing. It is the power of God. It is strength, it is courage that gives us this. Now, the other thing that we need is we need to not fear or be dismayed. They're very similar, but they're just a little bit different. See, going into new territory, it can be scary, right? Living in the unknown, we can, okay, what's going on here, right? 
we turn off the lights in here and we say, okay, everybody find the door. You're going to be walking around like this, making sure you don't bump into anything, right? We got a little, we could have a little fear. We could be a little bit scared. I know some of you are going to turn on your flashlight, the phone. No. If you, but living in the unknown, living in, living in new experiences, stepping into new territory can be scary. Well, I go to, when I go to work, uh, I support an area of facilities in eastern Ohio. And my very first trip out there, my, when I first went out there to, to meet them for the very first time, I, I went and flew out there, and uh, I needed to be there on Monday morning, so I flew Sunday after church. Now, I, I, go into, I fly into Pittsburgh, and it, it's 12, 15, 12, 30 in the morning when I land. It's after midnight when I land. I get my rented car. This is in October. It was, it was rainy. It was cool. I get on the road, and I start driving out to the facility. I go from Pittsburgh down. I hit the tip of West Virginia, and then in, into eastern Ohio in a small town called Caddis, Ohio, where I work and I support these facilities. And I get in the car, and I'm driving down my very first time. It's after midnight, you know, 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm driving, and it's not, a, it's a small town. It's not off a major interstate. I'm taking state roads. I'm taking county roads. I'm driving through other small towns to get there. And it was cool. It was rainy, and the fog was heavy and thick. And there's, there's different energy plants and, and steel plants and all that. As you're driving out of town, you could see the, the lights, and they have the flares on the towers that are going up and just lights blinking. And I'm sitting here driving and I'm like, oh my gosh. You could be intimidated doing that. You could feel a little bit scared. But you know what? I had my GPS on. I had the directions. I knew where I was going. Even though it looked a little scary, even though it looked a little intimidating, even though I didn't know for sure what, exactly what I was going to do, I knew that I was getting the directions. When I needed to turn left, I would be told to turn left. When I needed to turn right, I knew I'd be able to turn right. And let me tell you, when you step into your new territory, when you're going after the promises that God has given you, it's going to be scary. It's going to be intimidating when you first step into it. But how many know that we got the directions? He's going to tell you where to go and what to do and who to talk to and how to pray. God is going to give us the directions as we step into our new territory so we don't have to be scared. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be dismayed. See, dismayed is like scared extra times extra, right? Dismayed is, is, is way beyond just being, being scared or afraid. Dismayed is like... It's like, it's like a reaction. It's like, you know, it's, 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 it's fear multiplied to the point that you're just paralyzed. You're disabled. Huh? Your mind's all messed up. If I was, if I was to drive that road without my GPS, I remember the, day, remember the days of driving some of us old, older folk? You, you print out MapQuest, Right? Or you get that old school map you have folded out. I would be a little dismayed if I had to read that, but I got the directions. Amen. And I made it safe. I mean, obviously made it safe and, you know, without incident. But we got the directions. We should not be di dis afraid or dismayed. He has not called us to be afraid or worried. The Bible says... He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of sound mind. Also tells us in Isaiah 41, says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and hold you up with my righteous right hand.
Amen. See, God has these, God has the promises. He has the new territory for us. Each and every one of you, again, I want to tell you, you have a territory that God has called you to in 2023. It's not just for later. It's not just for there. There is something that God has for you this year. There are promises that he wants to bring forth in your life. There's things that he wants to do in your life, in your family. He wants to do it this year. It's here today for you. But we have to be courageous in our new territory. We have to be prepared in our territory. We have to be ready in our new territory. We have to be able to stand strong. We have to be able to be courageous. We have to not fear, to not be dismayed. Does that sound like a hard challenge? Does it sound a little challenging? Sounds like it could be a little bit hard, a little bit difficult, but let me know, let me let you know the key. God is with us. Amen. I'm going to get ready to close if I can have the worship team come. God is with us. He is, he is there with us. Just like Larry sang in the song, and this is why I, I pressured him so hard to get it today. When we're defenseless, when we're weak, when we're ready to give up and throw in the towel, he's in the trenches with us. When our spirit is weak, when we've done all that we can do, he's been right there with us. He's, he's felt our pain. He's done what we have done. He has experienced what we experienced, and he is still right there with us. He's right by our side. You know, the, the, the story of footprints, right? We, the story of footprints, many of us know and have seen the poster. It's appropriate because it talks about a man looking back on his life and seeing his life as a set of footprints in the sand. And he sees two sets. He sees a set for him and a set for God. And he, he goes and looks and sees in, in the hardest times, in the difficult times. See, God is always with us, but in the difficult times, he only sees one set of footprints. He only sees one right there in the sand, and he wonders, God, those were the most difficult times in my life. Where were you? What was going on? What was happening? How come I felt the way that I felt when I was going through that, that pain, that pressure? Where, where were you? So God says, I was carrying you. See, God is always with us. He is here with us. Come on, give Jesus a hand if you're going to give him a hand. Come on, God is with us. He is ready. He is here. We are not alone. He's not going to leave us to do the work alone, right there beside us, again, giving us those directions. We may have to build the table on our own, but he's going to give us the directions to do it. We have to put our hands to the plow and turn the wrench and, and put in the work and go and evangelize somebody and tell our family that Jesus loves them. Tell, tell, tell our boss, you know, God has changed my life and I'm a different person. We need to tell, you know, we need to put in the work and tell others, but you know, he's going to give us the direction. Uh, he's going to tell us who to talk to. He's going to lead us to the people that we need to minister to. He's going to lead us and, and guide us and walk us through our lives, but we have to put in the work. We have to do it. So I'm going to go back to the question that I first asked when we started here. God has called us to new territory. Each and every one of us have something in 2023. But the question is, can you see it? And I'll add to that question, not only can you see it, but are you being courageous in your new territory? Uh, we, need to, we need the strength of God in our lives. We need to be courageous. We need to not fear. We need all these things to be courageous in our new territory, whatever it is that God has for you. It could be very personal and just be a healing in your life. It could be very personal in being the salvation of, a, of, of your friends or family. It, it, it could be something bigger that God is, is calling you to, to minister and get involved in ministry and do different things. It could be whatever it is that God has for your new territory here. I want to let you know that he is with us. He has these promises for us. He has the plans for our lives. But are we going to be courageous when we enter that new territory? Are we going to be courageous in what he has called us to do for 2023 and even beyond? Let's stand this morning. Amen. I'm simply going to ask this here this morning. 
If you want to be courageous in the territory that God is calling you to, you want to have the strength of God. Maybe you find yourself in one of the situations that I mentioned before. Maybe you stepped into your new territory. Maybe you're waiting for God to bring the promise to your life this year. Maybe you've been afraid and, and, and just putting it off and not wanting to pursue the territory that God has given you. Or maybe you're just trying to figure out what the calling of God on your life is. We got this promise in our life, though. We have it here. It's for you right now, today. As we open up these altars, I simply want to ask you, if you want courage in your new territory, you want courage in what God is calling to you this year, then I want to ask you to come forward. We're going to pray. We're going to ask him to give us the courage, the strength. We're going to have ask him to wipe away the fear for what he wants to do in your life this year. Make your way. that God has for me because I lose courage because I, I, I lose heart that I, I, I lose strength I'm going to ask one more time if anybody is here that you want that strength you want that courage you want to be able to stand in the promise that God has given you for this year the promise that God has given you for your life we're going to pray in just a moment but we're going to sing one more time and I'm going to invite you to make your way I'm going to invite you to come also if you you didn't even need to begin the journey and you don't know Jesus in your life you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior you can begin the journey today you can receive the promises that he 
and ask for you. I'm going to ask you to come forward as well. If you want Christ in your life, come to this altar. Lift your hand, and we're going to pray for you this morning. Jesus into my life. Lift your hand. I want to pray for you this morning. Amen. God bless you. Anybody there? If Even if you're out in the seats and you didn't come forward, you want to have Jesus in your life. You want to begin this journey with him. Have the promises, the new territory that he has for your life. This is the best new territory that you can get. Let's pray. You lift your hand. You want to accept Jesus into your life this morning. Simply say, Jesus, I believe you died for me to forgive my sin. And I ask you, come into my heart. Help me to live for you. Help me to take new territory to experience the promises that you have for my life and to live for you the rest of my life in Jesus' name. Oh, and if you're here there, you want the power of God. Come on. Somebody said that prayer, your life has changed. Your life has changed from this day forward. Your life has changed. You're a child of God. You got the promises he's given you. You got the promises that he has before you. And those of you that are here, maybe you didn't say that prayer, but you want the promise. You still want the promise that God has for you. If you want to be courageous in your new territory, you want strength, you want courage, you want power, you want to stand against the attacks and the the fighting of the enemy. Lift your hands and let's pray. Father, I come before you this morning in the name of Jesus, my God, and I pray for our people, my God, our congregation, everyone here at this altar, the uplifted hand, everyone says that I want courage in my new territory. I want strength in my new territory. I don't want to have fear or be dismayed in my new territory, but I want the power of God. I want the anointing of God upon my life to receive the promises that he has given me, not just in 2023, not just Lord, today, but Lord God, the promises that you have for our lives for the future, my God, the promises that you have for our lives, I pray for each and every person, my God, here with that prayer, here with this hand lifted, that you would anoint us, my God, Lord, for your power, my God, is upon us, my God, your strength, my God, is with us, my God, just as your word said, we shouldn't fear, we shouldn't be dismayed, but we should have courage, my God, Lord, you are going to hold us up with your righteous right hand my God. And I pray that you give us all of these characteristics, my God. Lord, give us the strength. Give us the power. Give us the anointing. Give us the might. Give us the will, my God, to stand for you and see the promises that you have for our lives, my God. We ask you, my God, Lord, to fill our hearts and our lives, my God. Lord, to serve you, my God. Each and every day, give us the anointing, my God. Give us that strength, God. Lord, we we can't make it without you, my God. We know it is you and only you that gives us the ability to do it, my God. We thank you this morning, God. Lord, we love you this morning, and we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand clap like he's giving you the victory. Give him a hand clap like you've won. Give him a hand clap like those promises are already in your life this morning. Morning. Amen. Powerful, powerful word, Pastor Kyle. Thank you so much. Thank. Come on, guys. Let's get a little radical here this morning. Jesus is good. Oh, what a beautiful next-gen presentation. Let's give him a clap here today. 
Sister Esther and the presentation for United We Can and a dynamic word straight from the throne room of God for his people today. And now I want to encourage everybody, let's go and let's support United We Can Luncheon right now. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father, we just love and adore you so much. We thank you for your message to your people here this morning, God. We receive it with gladness. And now, Lord God, bless the food and the fellowship out front in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the people of God say amen. God bless you.